Hello everyone, I'm Stuart and just going to take you through modifying an existing Langstroth box so that you can put flow frames in them and uh, make your honey harvesting a lot easier. This is a 10 frame Langstroth, this one here, but this also applies to an 8, eight frame Langstroth. It's the same thing, just slightly different measurements. I'm using the flow manual here that comes with the flow frames and you can also access this as a PDF on our website honeyflow.com. I've measured the center point here and um, I'm going to measure out from that point um, half of 336 mil or 13 and 7, 7 30 seconds of an inch but millimeters are much easier even if you are in America. Um, so half of that is 186 mil each way. You can use a square if you like or or make other points but basically you're drawing those lines and then you have to decide where do I want this top line now in the instructions it says about um, 150 mil or six inches up which is there is is the height for your top line which is fine if you're keen and the handle this recess for the handle isn't in the way or anything you can make it a little higher the important thing is that there is some strength in what eventually becomes the strut across the top um, to hold the frames. You can have a square cut if you like. We've chosen to make it look a little bit nicer and made it rounded and a CD seems to be about the right, um, the right size. We're using the CD to give us the curve that we want. What we're doing is cutting away the piece that to allow for the slightly deeper flow frame. So that depth there, that one inch or 25 mil is a critical depth. There it is there. Three hundred and fifty seven mil. Now if your box is like this finger jointed and I'll have the screws poking through, you're going to need to screw back the screws out to cut through them or use a metal cutting blade, which is actually what we do have on this jigsaw, so that you can cut straight through the screws or nails that hold the box together. A metal Cutting blade's good anyway, it gives you a nice fine cut on the wood. They're not very long these, days. still a bit too long. So we've cut this out and you can sand the edge of it to make it all um, lovely and smooth, uh, but it forms your cover. So now we're going to cut away the piece that becomes the flow key access cover. Depending on your skills and the tools you have, you might prefer to cut this with a thin blade circular saw that you can just drop in. It'll give you a straighter cut than a jigsaw. Um, or you might want to nail a guide along so that the jigsaw cuts straight. Or you might just want to do it freehand and take a risk, it won't matter too much. I'm going to um, let this blade dive in, uh, which is another little jigsaw technique, because we're starting without an edge to start on. There we go. So if you're going to do that diving the blade in like that, you might want to practice on something else other than your hive if you haven't done it before. Very important to have the base or the front at the base really steady and locked on so it doesn't jump around and to ease the reciprocating blade down very very slowly so you get the feel of it and then as it starts to bite in the wood keep moving the base forward don't, don't leave it in the one spot that's the main bits to that but have a practice you might bust a few blades just be careful I haven't finished yet, I'm coming back to finish the rest of that cut. It is important that this is fairly flat and, and um, so it's more important that the surface that remains behind the part of the box is flat. If you put some wobbles in the cover, what, eventually, what becomes the cover, that doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we've got what can become your, your cover for the flow keys and 
the rear window cover and this side. Here, where we've cut this edge, this still this part of what in Australia is called a rebate or what in America is called a rabbit. Soft wood. You can hit, it, hit the chisel with a hammer if you like. Or a mallet. It's just getting that little part out of the way. You slide right across to there. You have to do the same on this side. There we are, lovely. I want to point out that um, if you set this on a brood box now, you'd have a large gap here formed by the rebate or rabbit that holds the frames below. So of course that creates a V gap down, down the bottom here, which is unsatisfactory. Um, so what we use is a metal strip and that's going to screw up underneath here to close that gap off and also and also to just reinforce this wall we're going to notch it in and this is about an eighth of an inch thick or a little bit thinner two mil it's actually exactly two mil same here Means that sits nice and flush, so I just need to drill some holes in that. And that means that the bees can't get out there. So this, this little gap in here needs to be less than around two mil or an eighth of an inch, less than a bee gap, and the same for the other end of course and that is when they are all pushed close together. As it happens with this box, um, that is an okay gap to leave. If there is that B gap there, then you'll make up a piece of wood or core flute or something that goes in there and can get nailed in or glued in to make sure the bees can't come around the edge of the frames. If the gap isn't too big here and here, but you still want to make these even, as it turns out, it's a small gap. I'm going to put a, a screw in right here. Because then the flow frame will sit up against there. This could be a round headed screw. And just enough to set the flow frame out a little way. If you want, you can put a screw down in here to make sure that this frame just sits, doesn't wobble too much down the bottom. So let's do that just to show you how it's done. And you can decide on the, on the amount. Let's have a look at that. I reckon, I reckon this one comes out a little way. And that one sits up and that one sits too. So that's firm now. And we'll do the same on this other side. If you're really keen, you can do that for the other end as well. And um, just to make sure that, it's, that there's an even B gap along here and along here. So that involves a little screw and that can be put in even while the frame's in place. 
because it's going to hold that frame and the same at this end there of course these will drive in by hand you don't need this fancy screwdriver and there they all are just remembering that this gap here at the front of the hive on this side here needs to be no bigger than about two mil an eighth of an inch a little bit larger so a bee can't get out is the critical thing the bees can't get out there they can't get out here and of course these faces the windows are pushed up against this wall so they can't get out all the way around here so i'm adjusting the screw at the at the top front of the frame this is the front of the hive because it's where the bees will be coming out this way and this makes sure that the back end of the frame with a window is pushed up against the structural member that runs across and therefore um, the window is there are no B gaps these frames can't move back and forth there we go now remember we've um, made the depth of this less by putting in this strip so this won't fit anymore so you're going to have to cut this off all the way along there then I forgot to bring my planer and um, so I pay the price of cutting this by hand which is um, a bit of a mission these little butterfly sort of things so it's, it's up to you as to what you use for a catch but let's say you can just spin around and lock it you can do it up so that it's a little bit stiffer so this can either stick out like that and once again you do some little catches or if you wish you could cut all of this right off so you just have a thin strip and not one with an elbow and you just cut it off all that off and it sits in so there it is after all of the sawing it's done you can use a fancy handle whatever you like or you can just put in a screw like that to hold it you can have a lovely strap handle you can have a B as a handle doesn't really matter and then you also need the catch on the other side so if you really want it even then you've got to put it in the same spot of course you never measure this you just do it by eye and then realize later it's it's out of whack but there it is So there it is there, put it back on, beautiful. So hopefully your brood box is ready, you can place this on top and um, a lid and roof of course and you're off and running. So, so far in the manual we've been focusing on finger jointed hives, the ones where the, the joints are like fingers locking together on the edge, but plenty of boxes are made with what in Australia we call the rebate joint. As you can see, looking from it above, it's just cut like that and like that. It's very, very common and you might want to alter one of these rebate hives boxes to suit the flow frames, which you can do easily. So here we have one method of doing it. I'm sorry, it's just started raining. We're out on a veranda with a tin roof. It's noisy. I don't know whether you can hear me at all. This is a rebated box, just like this one. We've taken the face off and this, in this one the face has been cut. So there's been a cut taken down here and a curved cut taken here and that's been screwed back on. And then what you've cut away can still remain being the cover 
and uh, the important measurement is that that should be 25 mil or one inch. That's so uh, the flow frames. Here's, here's one here can drop in and sit snugly. However, with this method, there's an important thing to notice, and that is that it's really likely you'll need to put a thin strip of timber or um, core flute or whatever here because there'll be a gap all the way down there and all the way down on this side. So with this method, because the hive doesn't come around the corner, the box doesn't come around the corner, you need to create a thin strip to block up this gap that runs all the way down.